I've been enjoying this Pontiac Solstice for years. It's a wonderful car, and I like to try to keep the car looking as good as possible as far as the parts are concerned. And what we're gonna tell you about today is how to repair and replace the actual interior door handles on the car because they start to look a little shabby after a few years and the vacuum plating fails. And we're gonna show you how to do that with Chevy Cobalt parts and make it look as good as new and better inside. Here we have the interior door handle from the driver's side of this 2007 Pontiac Solstice and you can see the plating is separating from it. Not only does that not look good, but you, you can actually, that's like razor sharp, you can cut your finger on that real easy. And this is, as I said, the driver's side door handle, so you're using it all the time. The reason this happens is because the vacuum plating, which is the process used to plate the metal onto the plastic, is not as good as it should be. Whether something wasn't cleaned right or whatever, it tends to be that the ones in the Pontiac Solstice, particularly the driver's ones, fail. But so do the passenger side ones. So we're gonna show you how to change this part out and the exact correct parts now that we're gonna to use to do it. So let's look at the passenger side of the car. When you look here, you can see up close, this one is starting to separate in the exact same area and there's a little separation on the front of that handle. So we're going to do this handle this time and actually show you how to remove the door panel and go about making the change. First thing you have to do is remove this screw, Phillips head screw, on the end of your door panel. So you're going to take that out. One of the things you should do when you're working on your car like this, throw your parts inside the car. It's much easier to find them than setting them someplace else, so I'm going to set them on the passenger side floor. That's step one. Step two, you have to remove this sort of triangular panel you've got here. Now I have here a old body filler, plastic body filler spreader, and I'm going to use that because it won't scratch up the plastic. I'm going to put it in there, as you see at an angle. Then I'm going to take a flat blade screwdriver, put the flat blade screwdriver in, and sort of pull out with the flat blade screwdriver. By doing that, I've marred up nothing when I remove this panel. Here are the two screws. I'm gonna shine a flashlight showing you the upper screw is here. If we can get the camera to look at that. That's the upper screw. Down here is the lower screw. Both of those screws are gonna to have to come out. They are seven millimeter hex head screws. So you're gonna need a seven millimeter socket or a seven millimeter nut driver to take those out. So we'll do that next. All right, I have my seven millimeter ratchet set up here. Really all you gotta do is break it loose. Now you can do something like this because these are actually pretty long. So I'll set this down and we'll take out one of them. Now one of the things is, is you could end up dropping it down in here. You could drop it on the floor or something. So if you think you're gonna have troubles with that, it's a good idea to have your handy dandy magnet ready in case you wanna catch it. But it's a long screw, so unscrew it by hand, and eventually we'll get it undone here. And I'll just do the one, the other one we'll do off camera for you. There's the screw, so you can see it's pretty long. Right now we're looking up by the door handle itself and you can see there's a slot in there with a tab. You have to put a screwdriver into that area right here, and you pull back on the tab towards the front of the car, and it'll pop this little panel out. Now I'm gonna pop the panel out. There's the panel popped out, and you gotta weasel it out of there. And once you have it out, you'll find out you have one more Phillips screw that's located right here. Light that up, there's the Phillips screw. You're gonna to have to take that out now. This is your back of your door handle. You have to pull up like that. That's how easy it is to get out. 
that just released the cable from the door handle to the back of the door. So that's undone. Now you have two wiring points you've got to get undone. And they require a little finesse. This one, you have to get the little tab down far enough to release it and get it to pull out. There we go. And you notice I was pressing on the center here and pulling at the same time. That removes that part of the wiring harness. And it's got to be off because we have to do this whole thing on the bench. Now this wiring harness also has a plastic tab, Christmas tree style tab down here. The odds are we're going to ruin that no matter what we do to get this out. And there's sort of a one-way fastener in this case. Nope, I actually got it off, amazingly. Now this one down here has to also come off. And it's quite the pain to get off. I'm going to get the tabs to release on it. Here. I'm trying to turn the door so you can see it. This part right there has to be depressed so that this can be slid out of the door itself. So you've got to get this part depressed to slide this out of the door. And it probably isn't going to work out on camera because I'm probably going to be all in front of everything when I'm working on it. Nope, I got it. So you notice I pressed down here, pulled out on that particular part of the wiring harness. So now it's undone. And the door panel is completely free from the car, which is what we need to do. Now you saw us remove the passenger side door. On the driver's side door, you have this switch combination, which controls your mirrors. That one's really, really hard to fiddle with to get it open. I don't have any great news for you how to do it, or I'd have shown it to you. You basically just have to fiddle with it. But this particular switch is going to cause you even more troubles than these are. And in most cases, you really want to disconnect one side of your battery when you're doing this. Because this one, when you get it apart, you accidentally touch something, you're likely to actually blow a fuse with that one. So here we have our panel off. You can see the damage again on this particular handle. And we're going to want to replace the handle. Now what we're going to do is show you the two part numbers you need next. So I'm going to set this down and we're going to show you the part numbers. For your driver's side, the part number you want is right here. This is a Dorman part. There's your part number, 81890. It's an interior door handle. And really what this is, is for a Chevy Cobalt. And we're going to show you how we take the Chevy Cobalt door handle out of its housing and install it in the Pontiac door. When you're looking at the passenger side, here's your doorman number for the passenger side, 81857. Remember, these are really for Chevy Cobalts and not Pontiacs, but you're going to see that the parts are identical. We'll take this one out and open it up. This is the identical part right there. There's your door handle. Look at it. They're exactly the same. The housing it's in, we don't want, but the door handle, we do want. So this is what we're going to switch out into this door when we remove this one. So let's look at how we get this apart. Looking at our door handle here, they leave you a plastic cover on it to protect it. We'll peel that off when we're all done right now. It looks like there's defects in it. That's just the plastic on top of it. Let's look at the back of this. In the back of this, you can see there is a spring that provides your spring action, returns the door handle like that. There is also a metal pin going through here, and there is a little C collar up here at the top. The first thing we got to do is remove that little C collar. Best way to do that is to get yourself a jeweler's screwdriver, and you have to just kind of work it off of there. Because really what you're doing is removing a spring, but there I've got it off. And be sure you save that, you're going to need it. We'll set that aside. Now the pin has to come out. So we're going to press the pin out. I'm going to use our screwdriver to push it out. So the pin's going to come out the bottom, and our spring kind of got away, but we got him back. It didn't go too far. Watch it with the spring. And now the door handle comes out.
And this is the only part we want. We don't care about this housing that isn't used. That would fit the Chevy Cobalt. We don't care about that. So we'll put that aside. Now we're going to go back to our actual door and we're going to move the bad handle from the door panel. On the back of the Pontiac door panel, you'll notice that the pin is actually plastic in this 2007. I don't know if they were all plastic, but they certainly are in 2007s. We're going to have to get rid of that plastic pin in order to take this out. Now the plastic pin has a fit on the far side here. They don't use a C-ring. This is the thing that's actually holding it. It's got a little split that causes pressure outside and it holds it in place. So we're actually going to cut this little pin to get rid of them. For that, we're going to grab our moto tool with a small cutoff disc in it. This is a used cutoff disc. And we're going to cut. Now this may take more than one time because I can't, I don't want to use too large of a disc because I don't want to cut into something I want to keep. I don't care about the door handle and I don't care about the pin. That's the part I'm trying to cut apart. And you may have to flip it around, which is what I'm doing. You see, I didn't get the whole side yet. So we're going to cut that now some more. All right, pins cut apart. So we've got two parts to our pin. We've got the part right here I'm pushing on. That won't quite come out of here because this piece is in the way. We've also got a part on the other end. Now, if necessary, we'll cut more of the pin if we've got to at some point here. Right now, we're going to try and see if we can force it either way out of the hole. If we can't, we will cut it some more. And I'm going to get a punch and see if I can move this. There, we got it moved. And we'll see if we can start taking parts out. We don't even care about this spring, although it's most of the way good, but I did run into it there because we obviously have a new spring, so we don't care about this either. We don't have to be real nice to everything, in other words, in order to get this loose and undone. There, we got our pin coming out somewhat. There, we got part of the plastic pin out, and we got the old spring out. We don't need those. Now we want to get the rest of the plastic pin, which is right here. And we're going to get that to push out. If necessary, get something like an awl. We'll see if we can push it out with that. There we go, it's out. Here we have our handle, just like the other one, except it's brand new. Back of our door panel, we're gonna slide the handle in from the front. So it's like this, it would look like this. There, you've got it. Now I have to hold it in place right now. There's nothing holding it. I'm gonna flip it back down. And you have a metal pin. This metal pin has to go in. The hole on this side, the top side, is larger than the hole on the bottom side. So the pin can only go one way, because you'll notice your pin is larger on one end, smaller on the opposite end. So the pin can only go in like this. Now, you see you can't put the pin in there. And you can't go the other way. So how do you put the pin in? This is going to be the Armstrong method of how you get the pin in. So I'm going to show you how you do that. Another thing you're going to want to have available is your spring. This is the spring you're going to use. It's your brand new spring from this set. Notice you have two legs here. This leg and this position, notice how I've got the spring, this position, this leg goes in the slot. There's a slot right there where my fingernail is. This leg goes in that slot. This leg, the other one, is going to be vertical in here when you've got it installed correctly. So let's look and see if I can put it in here. Your spring is going to look like that when it's in. If you can see, I know my fingers in front of it, but it's basically what you got to do. You got to have your one leg up right where my fingernail is. The other leg is under my finger in the slot. That's how the spring goes in. This will probably not stay in position here and we'll probably have to put it back in. All right, I've got the handle on the underside and now I'm going to be doing something very difficult as I've got to bend this particular panel, that's the only way you're going to get this in here, is to bend like crazy. And I'm going to have the camera move on the other side because I've got to be in a different position to do this. And this is the way you're going to have to do this. Is this is really difficult, but you've got to push like crazy. And I've got it in there part way. This is actually the hardest part of the job you're going to do. I'm not going to tell you it's easy because it's not. It's in the realm of a pain, 
It's almost like you need three hands to do this. Let's try a screwdriver. There. Okay, so I've got the handle a little bit. So now, put my pin in part way. And I can't go all the way because I've got to put the spring back. See, remember we talked about the spring. We're going to put the spring back in the slot. And we've got to press the spring down in here. There it is. And now I've got to push on the pin to capture the spring. So you start it in there. Because we've got a lot of pressure going on here. I've still got to get something to push on it with. There we go. Now if I can push the pin over. There, I got it. The problem you have with doing this is you've got to line stuff you can't look at. I mean, I can sort of look at it from the back here, but that's not lining, looking at what the holes are lining up as. All right, so now i got it the way in. Problem is next, I've got to line the bottom of it, and you can't see it. There's no way to look at it where you can actually physically see what you're doing. So you're doing this by... by totally by the by gosh and by gosh method of trying to get it to line up and go in the hole. So now I'm trying to get it in the bottom hole. Got it in the top hole. Need it to go in the hole all the way. There, it's in. Okay, now we got our pin in here. And right here is where our slot is. See, I've got the little screwdriver in the slot. We got to put our C-clip back in there. So I'm going to put the C-clip in. You probably wouldn't be able to see it. I'm going to start by using this bent nose, long nose pliers. I'm going to set it, try to set it in there. Yes, the pliers is magnetized. Okay, our C-clip is back on. Now you'll notice something here. In doing all that, we broke this point. But it isn't actually a problem, because you can see that what they did when they put this together, they just melted plastic together. So now we're going to fix that. And we're going to get this back in position. This little tab here, this piece has to be behind the tab. So you see I snapped it back into place. The next thing is, is we got to fix that. Here we are with our easy fix, our Weller Industrial 300 slash 200 watt soldering gun. We're going to heat it up here a bit, and what we're going to do is we're going to do what the factory did. We don't probably have a fancy or big gun, but we're basically going to melt the plastic back together because this is a thermoset plastic, so we can do this. And it takes a little bit to heat the plastic up and for the gun to be hot enough, but in a moment it'll get hot enough and we can start working on this. So we're just going to melt the two parts together here. Kind of makes a mess of the end of your soldering gun, but it's not a problem in the long haul. You really don't want to breathe the fumes any more than you have to. So there you go. We melted it back together. Nobody's going to be looking at it. And the factory melted it in the first place. Works just like it should. First thing we got to do is put our wiring harness stuff back in. Now I have a rug on the floor to balance the door. We're going to push the socket back together and just snaps in place. Now we're going to do our upper one, but I'm going to have to flip this up because there's only so much wire. I'm going to flip that one in, and I don't know if I can put my Christmas tree in. I did. I got the Christmas tree in. Now what you do, lift up, put your door over your door latch, and you see on the back here there's this little plastic piece that runs the whole length. That's going to be important when we position in just a moment. 
Do not forget, you've got to put your cable back in place. You slide it in there. Your cable has to go in the hole in your handle. And it's one of those things that's a little futzy, but it is doable. It just takes a little bit of playing with it. Get this in here. Trying to get the actual cable in the hole. There, I got it. There it's in. That just slides back in place. And you start aligning your tabs and working your way around, hitting it back onto the car. And you notice I really do mean hit it. Because it's the only way you're going to get these tabs back into their holes. Get this all the way across, all the way across, all the way across, all the way across. Start that by hand, grab my Phillips screwdriver. So there we have successfully got the back portion of the door and really most of the door is on at the moment. That's your other Phillips screw. So I'm gonna put him in right up here in the top. If I can get this to line up right and get it started. in. Now we're going to do the two down here in the bottom. Work on them. Those are your seven millimeter ones. It's easier to start them without the ratchet on. Find your hole and start both of them. So we got one started. There we go. Upper hole in. You can do most of this, you know, as I'm doing it by hand. I'll do the final tightening with the actual ratchet. Okay. So now we've got those tightened. And when you put the panels back, you see these slots that I'm putting the light on? Those correspond to the four tabs on the back. So you got to line this up in those slots and get this in here and then you just push and that panels back in. The upper panel, you'll see that on this end, this is the end opposite of how we took it out, there's a slot on the front end. The slot on the front end, there's a tab that goes in that slot. You got to get this tab in this slot and then all you do is push it in. But you know, you're working in a small spot, may or may not be super simple. It might take you more than one try. You got to find that tab and get it in the hole. And that may or may not be super easy. That wasn't too bad. I just pushed it in. So that one's in. Now that we've done that, you go back and you say, gee, I don't like the plastic we got here, which as you remember, I said I was going to leave on purpose. Keeps us from jimming up the part while we're putting it in. And we've got our plastic peeled off. Really likes to stick to it good, but there it is. Brand new handle. All installed. And at this point, you can clean off your door, whatever you have to do. Uh, verify that everything works. So let's do that. Let's turn on our accessory position here. and we'll verify that things are working. Well, looks like our door lock works. And it looks like our window works. Everything works. So we're all done with that installation. We hope you've enjoyed this video. At Cars Plus, our mission is to teach and preserve automotive history and to publish how-to videos. We believe that the past is part of our future. If you share the same sentiment, please like this video, share it with your friends subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you can enjoy more of our videos.